if I want to write a book, I can figure out how to do that. I know that every desire in life has a path. And if you want it badly enough, then you will create the path even if a map is not provided to you on day one. I'm not gonna lie, I feel so out of practice right now. I filmed the last video like a week and a half ago before I went to Asheville, and somehow a week and a half is long enough for me to feel super dust covered in this process, as if the last three years of recording videos hasn't been enough to make this just muscle memory. But I guess a lot of things aren't muscle memory. I'm going to keep this recap short because I feel kind of rusty and out of practice. And I'm just going to jump right into the concept and the topic of today's video, which is becoming our dream version of ourselves, um, watching the old versions of ourselves die, basically all of that. Like, I just want to share a wholesome story with you about how I've realized that I am becoming the woman that I always wanted to be. And honestly, I never really thought that I was going to become her, at least not in this lifetime. I would look at people with the qualities that I'm about to describe that I'm realizing that I have now as a super far off thing, you know, not far enough away that I, I can't imagine it and I can't envision it, but far enough away that I thought it would never be accessed by me. And I'm so grateful and honestly kind of surprised to report that that's changed. Now, before I share with you this future dream version of myself, I want to take a few minutes and talk about the old versions of myself because we all have a million, maybe 10,000, five, whatever you want to quantify it as. We all have past versions of ourselves. And I think it's important that we start there before we can go forward. Now, in becoming this new future version of myself, it means that I've changed again. My self-concept has changed again. And it's changed many times over the course of my life. Something that is really challenging for me, I don't necessarily know if it's a pro or a con. I'm sure it has pros and its cons, is that as I change and evolve into newer versions of myself, I immediately, as I accelerate into that next version, lose the objectivity or the ability to effectively truly remember what it was like when I was living in the past version of myself. Basically, like the old me's decompose, they go away, they fly away, they dissolve immediately after I ascend into the next level, the next era of myself. It kind of feels like, I don't know if you've ever seen this in a video game, or sometimes they'll film this scene in movies where a character is running across the map or they're running across the ground and the ground is crumbling beneath them as they're running. That's exactly how my whole life has felt. You know, I am exactly wherever my two feet are. And as I evolve and move forward into these new versions of myself, literally like there's no old me to return to. If I stop and turn around, it's just empty. I can't really have a good gauge for how far I've come. I don't really remember how it felt to be, you know, like the anxious version of me or the insecure version of me or the really mentally tormented version of myself, which that's probably a good thing. But it also is kind of challenging because it makes it really hard for me to look back and honestly reflect on the journey that I've taken and how I got to where I am today both to myself and also, you know, in explaining to other people what my storyline has been like and how I got here from where I started, which is nothing like who I am today. I have a quote here in my notes page that I put in for notes in this video, and honestly, I just want to read it verbatim. I said, I went from a girl who was so uptight and rigid and controlling, a girl who wouldn't even leave the house without packing a day's worth of calories just in case, to a woman going on week-long solo trips to the middle of the desert, scaling mountains and abandoning all of the weight that I cannot carry of them. And I just want to take a second and reflect on that. I mean, I really was such a panicked child. I was panicked in middle school and in high school. I remember I had an anxiety attack because I thought I was going to faint again. And then I started to carry literally like meals with me everywhere that I went. I had a contingency plan for everywhere 
that I went with food and water and plans and friends. And I did that all the way up through college even and beyond college. It got a little bit easier, but that journey, that woman, that girl that I was so scared and anxious is nothing like who I am today. And I have no real great objective way of remembering what that felt like. It's just crazy to me how much I've evolved and changed. And I'm proud of all of that growth and that change. It's actually just kind of blows my mind that I've changed that much and I'm only 25. The wholesomeness of the way that I've realized just how much I've changed, that I am quite literally walking around in a new identity and version of myself that not just I see, but that everybody around me sees as well, was a couple weeks ago when I went to my friend's Halloween party. I see my friends as often as I can, and in this particular circle, I hadn't seen them in a little bit of time. Um, You know, I, I think I mentioned last week or two weekends ago, I was in Asheville, North Carolina, and then the weekend before that, I drove to New Hampshire and then I went skydiving in Maine and I hadn't seen my friends in a few weeks. Um, But outside of the timing of it having been a few weeks, I hadn't seen them in a few trips. And, uh, you know, when I saw each of my friends, they were catching up with me and they said, how was your trip? And I go immediately like, which one? Because I had been to three places since I had last seen them. And to just hear that sentence come out of my mouth, like, well, which trip? It kind of put into perspective for me that I have now officially become the traveling, you can't pin me down friend out of most of my friend groups. And that's just kind of crazy to me because I remember always having this fondness for that kind of girl or honestly even that kind of person it doesn't need to be gender specific like the kind of person who's just gonna be a little bit spontaneous and act on a whim and go do something and take on solo trips and it doesn't need to be this crazy adventure like utah for example but just maximizing the free time and being somebody who can spend an abundance of free time alone with themselves with their thoughts get in the car go somewhere not need people not need a plan not need anything to be like professionally or specifically organized and just go after things like i never thought that i'd be the traveling friend and um i'm not so much into the whole like traveling aesthetic like i don't think that i'm cool because I just go travel. I recognize that to be in a position to to just get in the car and go means that I have the supply of money to spend on gas and hotel if I can't find a cheap place to stay or to camp. And so I recognize that it is a place of privilege and I don't want to sit here and be like, oh, I'm an elitist because I can travel. I'm, I'm very just very grateful for the fact that I can do this. Um, but I always looked up to people who did this sort of thing. And I think a a big part of me aspired to be more like those types of people. I just never thought that I'd be one of them. So whenever I'd meet somebody who is well-traveled or well-experienced or was doing this kind of thing, I'd always, this was the vision I'd have of them. Like it's far enough away that I don't think I'm ever going to be that person, but it's close enough that I can imagine and put myself in their shoes and feel, you know, vicariously what it must be like to be that kind of girl what it must feel like to be able to access that kind of thing to be that confident to trust yourself to trust the world to meet you halfway i just never thought that it would be me but it somehow suddenly is me i have some more notes in here that i want to just share verbatim i never thought i could be this girl I thought being this girl was reserved for people cooler and tougher and more capable than me. But the self-concept is being reshaped as I choose my lefts and rights, my ups and my downs. Who I am is being molded right alongside the things that I choose to be doing. I guess that's what sort of happens. We do and we become. Then one day we can just be because that self-concept has evolved and baked and aged long enough to be renamed identity. So we are, at the core, that person. Even if we are not actively doing the things that make you that person, you are that person at rest. Honestly, I'm just going to read my notes verbatim for the rest of this because I think they're important. I laid down on the couch with my coffee, sipped it as I read wild in silence. I looked around and saw all the things I've bought and built in this apartment. 
the style I've brought into here and with me. And I realized this is my life at rest. I'm calm, I'm sitting still, and I'm okay with who's showing up, with how I'm showing up. Let my self-concept and my identity change a million times more over the course of my life. It will, whether or not I want it to. But if I can retain this feeling, this sense of pride in who or what I've accomplished, and this trust in the broader universal networks holding me up and in them, like a net, as I change and figure myself out, then all else can be free to move around me. I am held, protected, and happy with how I am unfolding, with who I am seeing in that unfolding. That's enough for me. It's all I've ever wanted, and so it is now. Mine. I just feel really honored and really proud that somebody who I thought I could never be, the life that I thought was reserved for somebody, anything but me, is now mine. I have slowly made those choices to work on my mental health and to get in a place where my anxiety is under control and I feel confident in myself, confident enough to take trips to do these little solo dates at coffee shops and how that evolved into driving farther to find a new coffee shop and how that evolved into just going to the park by myself. And then that really ultimately culminated in me taking this mega week-long solo trip to the desert and coming back from that, realizing that if I could jump off a cliff, that there's nothing that I can't do. And now if I want to utilize my free time to go travel or to see a friend or to do literally whatever I want, I can because I have the agency to set my life sail in the direction that I want to be going. And that's up to nobody but myself. Maybe it's never been up to anybody but myself over the entirety of my life, but it took me a while to realize not that that's an obligation of sorts, which it is, but that it's really such a wonderful thing that I get to choose every single step that I make in my life. And so being the traveling friend and the person who's never around anymore as... um maybe stupid or trite that sounds on the surface, the real deep meaning of that to me goes way beyond that triteness. And it says that I have evolved myself from early humble beginnings to a place that I never thought that I could be. And if I can do this, then what can I not do? I think the answer is nothing. The versions of myself that in this present moment, in this future version of myself that are now far away that I think maybe I can't attain, there's a little bit less hesitation, there's a little bit less doubt. I think I can get there if I choose to. If I want to make my way down to Florida, I can figure out how to do that. If I want to write a book, I can figure out how to do that. I know that every desire in life has a path. And if you want it badly enough, then you will create the path even if a map is not provided to you on day one. And that's where I am. So if you're struggling with the self-concept, if you're struggling with that development into the next version of yourself, just rest assured, put yourself where you are, one foot in front of the other. And if you want it badly enough, you're going to find your way toward it if it's meant for you after all. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap up the video here. Uh, I love you. Thank you for listening as always. And um, I will see you next week. Also, by the way, it's like randomly 75 degrees here and sunny and it's November and I couldn't help but wear like just a cutoff again to make myself feel good. And it is also just so surprising to me, like still how much my mental health will improve when it's sunny and warm out. Like I just think that is crazy. But anyway, I'm going to wrap up the video here. Um, I love you. Thank you for being here and I will see you next week. Bye.